Hey everyone, so I know this video is long overdue, but I wanted to tell you guys about my labor and delivery story. So taking a trip back in time, I went into labor on Monday, December 7th, um, which at that point I was already 40 weeks and 6 days. Um, so I was completely fed up with being pregnant and I felt no contractions or anything all day and I was getting really annoyed and then somebody told me you know what why don't you try chamomile tea and you know see if it helps so I drank chamomile tea sometime around like 10 p.m. on Monday December 7th and at around 11 p 11 30 I started getting some really sharp back pains um, which I mean, I had never, obviously I never had a baby, so I didn't know what was happening. And this wasn't like a couple pains here and there. This was like one sharp, long pain for like a 20 minute period. And so I was like, okay, I don't know if I'm in labor. And okay, mind you, my husband works nights, so I am home alone. And I figured, you know what, I don't think I should call him because I don't think this is anything. So after about 20 minutes, it, the pain went away. And then, you know, I, I was able to just, you know, go to sleep, whatever. Sometime around 12 o'clock, maybe 12.30, the pain was back and it was even sharper than the first time. So at this point, I was like, you know what, I need to call my husband. And I called him and I was like, I don't know what's happening. And he was like, I will be right there. So he came home from work um, and I called the hospital and I was like, you know, I am 41 weeks, pretty much 41 weeks pregnant. Um, and I'm having these really sharp pains in my back, you know, should I come in? And they were like, well, how far apart are they? And I said, you know what? It's not, they're not far apart. It's just one long pinch in my back. So seeing how I was already 41 weeks, you know, we ended up going to the doc, uh, to the hospital. Um, and that was at 1230 AM basically on December 8th. Um, so we went to the hospital and they admitted us and then they put me on that machine, you know, where it monitors your stomach. And um, they were like, oh, you know, you are in labor, but you're having very light contractions. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have you walk around and see if there's any more dilation, like dilation in your cervix. Because at that point I was probably maybe like two inches or two centimeters, two inches, um, two centimeters dilated. So we walked around the hospital for like an hour. And then when we got back to our room, they checked me again and they noticed that it was starting to um, dilate a little bit more. So they were like, you can either stay in the hospital and you can labor here or you can go home. And since I was in early labor, she kind of recommended that I just go home. Um, and I figured I would be more comfortable. So at 3.30 a.m. we went home. And we already had a doctor's appointment anyway on Tuesday, which was basically later that day um, at, I believe it was like 9.15 a.m. So um, we came home at 3.30 and we relaxed and, um, you know, I kind of laid down and I went to sleep. And at this point, I was already having more contractions, but they were... But they, I felt, they felt like pinches in my back. Like I didn't feel anything in the front, which I thought, I thought it was really weird. So it kind of just felt like I threw my back out a little bit. And so sometime around, I think it was like eight o'clock in the morning. I went downstairs to eat breakfast, and the pain was like getting really strong. So I called the hospital, and I was like, you know, they told me to come back. Um, if I feel like I need to come back, so I'm just calling to let you know that I'm coming back. And they were like, well, you know, how far are your contractions? um babies over there um how far are your contractions um you know we don't know if you really need to so what i did instead was i just went to my doctor's appointment and what they did was they monitored my stomach again and all of a sudden i they monitored me for about 45 minutes at the doctor's which is the gynecologist pretty much and i had no contractions anymore they were even like are you sure you're in labor and i was like yes i'm sure i went to the hospital this morning like I'm in labor and they were just like well I mean there's there's just little signs but they don't really look like labor contractions they just seem like little contractions and so at that point um, the doctor was kind of like you know what um, you're already 41 weeks pregnant do you want to be induced right now and I was just like let's do it let's do it like I cannot be pregnant a minute longer so we went to the hospital which was across the street by that time it was probably like 10 10 a.m or so and um we were admitted and then by sometime around like 11 15 11 30 um they were hooking me up to the ivs 
um, hooking me up to the IV so that I can get the antibiotics for the group B strep that I had to be treated for and then they started giving me Pitocin as well. Um, they induced me because my, contract my contractions were very irregular. Like I would have one, five minutes, it was like five minutes apart and then 10 minutes apart and then 30 minutes and then two minutes. Like they were all over the place. So they gave me the Pitocin and it started to regulate my contractions. Um, and you know, I was fine. You know, I was in labor for a total of tw about 26 hours. Um, and I tried to go as long as I could without an epidural, but after a while, like the pain became so unbearable that like I just like I I needed it like I couldn't go another minute without it. But I personally like I thought that when you get an epidural, like you're completely numb and you can't feel anything, and that wasn't the case. Like that wasn't the case. First of all, it was really hard for me to get the epidural because. I have you have a big belly and you're in a lot of pain and you need to arch your back and put like you know do all these weird movements to get them you know to get you in the right position for it um, so the doctor had to pick me twice um, and then after I got it you know I just felt so relaxed I was able I had all the feeling in my legs um, it just didn't feel as painful um, and so you know like I personally I feel like it was a good thing for me to get it because I was more relaxed with it um, but after a while it was probably maybe like 20 minutes after I got the epidural when I got it I was at four centimeters dilated about 20 to 30 minutes later I was at eight centimeters uh, by this time it was already maybe like seven like six or seven p.m. Um, so I was at eight centimeters for quite a while and then I went down to nine and I was at nine centimeters for a long time like the doctor you know kept searching in there and checking and we were trying to get you know my stomach to basically just release the last centimeter and at this point my water still hadn't broken um and you know it, I was just pretty I mean it just felt kind of endless but this whole time like you can feel all the pressure and like I felt I wasn't in pain but it was like very very heavy discomfort um, and like I had my husband and my mom in the labor, um, in the room with me as well as my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law. Um, but come around maybe like 10 o'clock, um, that's when I, like my water broke or I believe the doctor broke it for me, but she was reaching in there to check me and then it just like burst. So she was like, all right, you know, it's time to push. Um, and so at around 10 o'clock, everybody else left the room. So it was just my mom and my husband and, um, She's very uncomfortable. Hey! Um, so basically at this point it was time to push. And I pushed, like I personally thought it was just going to be like three big pushes and then come out, out comes flying your baby. It wasn't like that. I pushed for about an hour um, and I was getting very like restless, like impatient I would say, I think I would say because like I didn't realize that like you have to like all the force that it takes you know to try to push your baby out um so after about an hour you know she was coming lower but she wasn't coming out so we took a break um for about an hour so then we started up again probably sent her around like 12 um because we started pushing at 10 we at 11 we took a break so at 12 we started pushing again and i literally just felt like i don't know like i was pushing so hard and she wasn't coming out and you know everybody kept saying you know like we can see your head we can see your head and i started getting frustrated because i was like if you can see your head why is it she coming out um you know and finally uh, maybe at around like 12 30 um the doctor went in there and she was trying to help me you know push the baby out and uh the baby had meconium so she pooped and i began to panic the doctor was like oh you know it's okay you know we're gonna have a team in here um it was for as soon as you have the baby but i was like what if they're gonna take her away from me what if she has to stay in the NICU for a week like um, all these thoughts began racing through my brain and like i just became so worried and i was panicking and it, you know my husband was calming me down my mom was calming me down um so that was around like something around 12 30 so finally at like one i began to really 
you know, that's when the whole team, I was pushing that whole time pretty much, but around like one, that's when I guess I was far enough and I was like nearly crowning. Um, so all the doctor came in who was still because the nurse was helping me the whole time. So the doctor came in, the whole team of like eight or nine people came in the room with like all these tools and stuff. And, um, you know, that's when we began pushing and then, you know, comes 111 and out comes Harmony and um, what, what I really liked was that you know everybody was so supportive and you know so as soon as the baby came out um, the doctor took her and then they put her on the table they were suctioning her and everything and then they immediately brought her back to my chest so she was only away from me for like two minutes um, which I was really happy about because I heard stories about people that say you know if I wasn't able to hold my baby right away so I had a lot of trouble breastfeeding and um, thankfully we didn't have any problems um, she is a trooper she immediately latched as soon as you know after like maybe 10 minutes of being on my chest she latched and she used to kick a lot in my belly and like when she came out she was like jump like she was like kicking herself off of my body like trying to push herself higher up on, onto my chest because she was looking for my breast um, so Harmony was born on December 9th at 1.11 a.m. and you know we just feel I just feel so like happy and blessed to have her and I mean it's definitely a lot of work there's so many things that like people don't tell you um, but I feel very very blessed and I'm just really happy but basically after that so the, the whole labor went fine I didn't have any tearing um, and I felt great like, so a little change in, of scenery. I'm now feeding the baby. Um, it's the only way I can get to finish this video. Um, but basically, after we had her, they took us to the to the recovery room, and you know everything was fine. I felt great. I was walking around um, very slowly because it felt like my bottom half weighed like 800 pounds. Um, but later that day, so it was one o'clock when we had her. Later that day, around 12 p.m., um, <clears throat> you know, I got up to use the restroom and stuff, and I started getting, like, a really bad headache, and, and so basically, you know, I thought that was really weird, so I laid down, and I, you know, tried to get some sleep, and I, when I woke up and tried to get up to, um, you know, walk around again, it was so much worse, like, my headache was so bad to the point where I was, like, crying because I was in so much pain, like, I have never suffered from migraines and this was like migraine times like 12 like it was really bad and so I called the nurses in and I was like you know what like my head hurts so bad and it wasn't just my head it was like my neck too like this whole region and the only way I would be comfortable is if I was laying back in the bed not completely laying down but like reclined and so they gave me some pain medication and it was just honestly it was just making it worse like aside from the headache now this pain medication was making me nauseous and it was so bad to the point to where i was just throwing up like i couldn't hold any food down i would be nursing her in one boob and i would be turning over throwing up into the air like a bag on this side and she would just like look up at me like you know what is wrong with you mommy like it was just it was really tough for the first you know couple of days uh, while we recovered in the hospital because you know I couldn't do anything like my head was hurting so bad that I was literally like like kind of immobile like my husband the only thing I can do is feed her my husband had to pick her up and bring her to me and take her and he changed her diapers he took care of her he burped her he did everything all I can do was feed her and you know it was just it was so hard for me and you know to the point to where I was I just kind of couldn't take it like I would just sit there and cry and cry and cry because it was hard for me not to be able to get her and the smell of everything or the light like everything would make me just so sick and my head was hurting it was really bad like we were supposed to be discharged from the hospital on Thursday and we didn't end up leaving until Saturday and still even then that day like I was in so much pain like I just I wanted to get a lot I just wanted to go home um, so finally on Saturday we went home and our first night was very tough. Um, it was really tough. We, there are so many things, like I said, that people don't tell you about having a baby. But, I mean, 
we're learning and you know it's already been six weeks and you know we have our by third maybe like the second or third week I, we already had our breastfeeding down to a t like she latches on so well like i don't even have to put my breast in her mouth like she jumps for it like she is so active and you know like i'm just we're just really happy that you know we had her and then everything you know turned out great um but that's pretty much it for this video i hope that i didn't bore you guys with my rambling um so i do have a couple more um videos that i want to make for you guys so if you enjoyed this one or if you at least stood awake long enough to make it to the end um please don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe and look out for some other things that i'm going to be putting out for you guys but once again thank you so much for watching and i will catch you guys on my next video